Hello. I'm gonna do a, a easy composite mod. Uh, it's already 7800. Uh, I already have the board out. Obviously, uh, I'm gonna do some troubleshooting on this board, but it's up and running now, and uh, uh, I'm gonna mod it. So I'm gonna do a, a walkthrough that uh, using the same little board I used. Uh, some of the other videos I've done. Uh, I had a bunch of these boards printed up and uh, we'll probably sell kits for them. Somebody's been selling them on eBay for a long time but for me to do it that was a spendy route to go so it just made more sense to have some printed up. Uh, this is basically, let me, let me grab the camera. This is the area to focus on for the mod. Uh, I have to remove these these pins from the RF modulator here. Uh, the first one's grown, the second one's plus five volts, uh, the third one is the, the video, video in from the console, and uh, the fourth one's for the channel. A select switch, we're not going to use that or worry about that. Also have to remove a resistor, uh, this one right here. You see that? which is the fourth component over in this row from the RF modulator or in this way it's the fifth component over from this big red guy here so we're going to remove that and uh, audio uh, we're going to tap right here at the at the bottom of uh, resistors R5 and R6 and we're going to bridge these two connections actually and uh, that's where we're going to get the audio from that's going to run to the board. I'll also go over uh, putting the, the jacks in and modification I do uh, to, the, to the card slot. Although I'll probably post that one in another video. <laughs> I also have to replace the, the tack switches on this board. Uh, the power one was especially bad. You had to press it about 10 times to get the console to power on. So, I'll probably go over that too. So, like I said, that resistor, what ends up being R3, uh, needs to be removed. If I can get in here, maybe. Yeah, just hold the camera again. Come up with a system that works here. Anyway, I'm just going to come in with a set of cutters and uh, clip this resistor out on both sides. Kind of hard to do with one hand while I'm on the camera, but there we go. And uh, so that needs to be removed. In the case of the the pins for the RF modulator here, uh, I'm actually going to desolder those. Just on both sides, I'll desolder them here and I'll also desolder them on the board. Uh, another option, if you wanted, would be you can just cut these pins off right here. And oftentimes people just snap this board off. It just looks a little sloppier and I'll keep it. There's no point in, in cutting it off in my opinion. If for some odd reason in the future you ever wanted to go back to RF, it would be very easy to do uh, if I leave the board intact. So that's what I'm going to do. I have my, uh, my uh, desoldering tool all warmed up and, and ready to go so go ahead and get those out of there you could also desolder that that one resistor too if you you wanted to you don't have to clip it generally whatever works the easiest i'll go ahead and desolder this quick i'm using a uh, I guess a somewhat more fancy desoldering tool for a hobbyist, but uh, you can find the <laughs> the small pump desoldering tools if you get at Radio Shack. They're like fifteen dollars. I use that a tool like that for a long time, and it certainly gets the job done. Just have to be a little more patient sometimes. Just 
to make sure all those holes are, are clear. Everything's free. I don't want to, certainly don't want to lift any, any traces on the board. <laughs> As I said before, though, you know, you could just go ahead and clip those pins uh, in, in, in the case of using this board. Uh, it's, I'm going to put new header pins similar to this. They're just not going to be uh, right angle pins like this. They'll be straight. And uh, for the three three pins here, the first three pins, the, the ground, the plus five, and, and the video in, uh, I'm just going to put a three pin header in here and, and solder it directly to the board. And then that'll hold the board as well. The fourth pin is for audio. I'm going to run a small length of water, what, water, small length of wire, over to these two resistors. And then these three holes on the bottom are for the uh, the audio and video out and the ground out. So uh, I'm going to run three wires to the jacks from there. So. And here's the board now, uh, prepped and ready to go. You can see that uh, these these pins here are gone, and those holes are clear, and uh, the resistor three is cut out. I personally like to do uh, the jacks first before I attach the mod board uh, to the motherboard. Uh, it's just easier, in my opinion. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pull out the bottom lower half of the shell, and uh, I'm gonna clean that up quick and uh, show you how I drill them out. I'll probably include a template with these, or I, I will include a template with these, because uh, especially when you haven't you haven't done a bunch of them, it's a little tricky to to figure out the best way to to lay out your holes for your jacks. And uh, probably the most, you know, precarious part, the, the hardest part to fix if, if you do something wrong is uh, drilling the holes, you know, in a bad way. So they're misaligned or, you know, the wrong size. They're in a place where they simply won't work. They're just not accessible for you to, to do the soldering that you need to do or to, to mount the jacks. So I'll show, I'll show you where I put them. They're a little tricky to get, but I think that they look best. A lot of people... Well, let me find the lower half of the shell. <laughs> All right. And here's the lower half of the shell. Uh, oftentimes in, in how-tos and, and you know instructional guides on, on doing the modification on the 7800, I see them mount the jacks here on the side. I don't really care for that so much. Uh, when I first started doing it, I did it that way because you know that's what I, I had seen done. Uh, I, I, for the most part, now I'll, I'll install the jacks here in this lower portion. All right, I'm gonna get ready to drill the holes in the lower half of the shell for the jacks. I got my uh, three RCA jacks over here. <clears throat> got my template. I have some scotch tape somewhere. There it is. Uh, so as I said before, I'm gonna mount it. Right here on this side, in this lower section that sticks out the back. So, I'm going to a couple pieces of scotch tape. Kind of temporarily hold it here. And I have it so uh, the holes will be a little bit more towards the top and up. Directly centered on that. I find that that works better. Let's see if you can see it all. The template doesn't have to hold up all that well. I, I use an awl at this point just to mark my holes. So now I can remove the template. So there's 
It's going to be impossible to see on black there. Let's see if I can do it under the light. So there's three. Oh, there you go. There's three small indentations there where I'm going to drill my pilot holes. At this point, I use two different bits to do this. I use a 16th inch twist bit and a quarter inch Forstner bit. I, I find that they they come out more in line if I drill a pilot hole with a 16th inch bit first. I mean, you can jump right into it and do it with the Forstner bit too if you want. <clears throat> and the Forstner bit is certainly recommended. You can do the other hole, the, the, the actual final quarter inch hole uh, with a twist bit as well. But uh, these cases, especially the, the, the older plastic, and for some reason, the 7800 especially, uh, the plastic in, in, in some batches is especially bad and very brittle, prone to break after all these years. And I've had better luck with the, uh, with the Forstner bit, as have others. Uh, I read that a long time ago. And uh, at first I thought, well, I can get away with the twist bit because I didn't have a, a set of Forstner bits. Uh, but after trying a few times and experiencing some some fails, uh, I decided to spring for a cheap set. You can get them for for next to nothing on eBay for for garbage sets that might not be very good for anything else, but they work well for drilling plastic. And then I use just a scrap piece of in this case I got a piece of quarter inch uh, luon that I use that slides right in here. It's hard to find something good to support this uh, when you drill the holes in this position. Uh, so I tend to just slip a board in here, so when I come through the one side, I don't come crashing into the other side here of it and potentially break it. That way I kind of smash into the wood and you can see all the, all the indentations in there from me doing this over the years. So right now I'm waiting for my battery to charge on my, my cordless drill, so I'll drill holes here in a moment. All right, uh, the battery on my drills, I'll charge it up now. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, drill the holes where I made the marks with the awl. All right. Like I said before, I'm going to start with the 16th inch, uh, just regular old twist bit to make the initial hole. Are lined up, <laughs> and then I'll use a, a quarter inch Forstner bit for the, uh, the final hole. I don't like to drill these holes at uh, full speed. If you do, there's the potential to melt the plastic, so you really don't want to do that. It smells awful too. Since those are all drilled, I'm just going to grab the camera and show. Instead, I put them up a little higher, and that's, that's where the template puts them. And uh, If the holes are slightly off, it's not the end of the world. Uh, there is a little bit of play in there, and you can, you can tweak them a little bit uh, to get them in line. Uh, I'll show the next part then, installing them. 
Alright, before I uh, put the jacks in place, I usually do a, a little bit of prep work. Here I have a, a couple pieces of, of wire, short wire that's about two inches long. They're stripped on both ends. I'm going to use them for the grounds. And then the, the longer wires that lead back to the mod board are about eight inches. I'm going to strip those as well. Uh, these shorter ones, I'm going to twist them together. And then use the uh, the ground tabs that are with the jacks. Kind of twist that whole thing together. The two wires, twist it together, and then put it through the hole there, and twist it up. And solder that quick. Get it to stay where I want. off some of the excess here. Alright, All right, now one end of those two, I'm going to do the same thing again with the little ground tab. Just a single wire through the wall. Solder that up. Trim it up. All right, and the other wire that's sticking out, I'm going to take the uh, the longer eight-inch wire that's going to be for ground. In this case, I'm using gray. I'm going to twist that and tie that together with this uh, this other wire and use the last ground tab, twist it up the same way I've been doing the others, solder that up. It's much easier to do it before I put the jacks in place rather than after. Right. Now the ground is all prepared. I'm going to use purple for composite. Now with the jacks, because it's such tight quarters where the uh, the jacks go in the 1700 where there's the little, little area that I'm using, I take it and I take a pair of needle nose pliers right where the hole is and I kind of kind of bend it up on a right angle, something like that. And uh, that way there's a there's enough space for the uh, for the jack to get all the way in otherwise it, that that tab kind of bottom out in that space and you can't get the jack all the way in so all right now I'm going to solder the wires to the jacks like I said kind of pre-bending that in this case I'm using purple for composite I said before it's going to Get it in there. Uh, now with the audio, I have a eight inch white wire and a four inch wire and I'm tied together here on one end. Uh, the longer one's gonna run back to the mod board and the shorter wire is just gonna kinda jump between the two jacks uh, for the dual mono. So I'm gonna solder those up. All right, and that's all the prep work that I do before I, uh, before I start putting them in the console itself. Just the, the yellow jack with the wire. Uh, the white jack with two wires, the shorter jumper, that'll lead to the red jack, and then, you know, prepping the, the ground wire. So I'll start with that composite jack, and I'll feed it through and the hole that's closest to the edge here. doesn't really matter whatever sequence you want them in. And I'll take one of the one of the lock washers, put that in there, and then the ground, the one that's closest to the to 
to the mod board, the tab, feed that in there, not. And then comes the fun part uh, with this being such tight quarters here and having all these things and, and wires and what have you. And it's hard to get in there with basically anything, including a wrench. So uh, I tend to struggle with this a bit. It's a matter of getting that washer and that tab down in there in the position and gotta leave it a little loose to get the knot. Once you get the nut started on there, it's it's golden, but it takes a little bit of effort sometimes. It helps if you kind of hold that wire, and then the tab will get stuck in a groove of the threads, and then I just get in there with a pair of tweezers and get the nut where it should be and kind of gently nudge it and turn it. And then it's started, and that, like I said, is the... Definitely the hardest part is getting it started. <laughs> so I'll kind of repeat the process for the white jack here. I'm going to feed both of these wires through that hole. Grab them with my tweezers. First the long one, and the shorter one. And pull them both through. Grab them. Here. It up on me. There we go. Alright. Same procedure, this time down the long wire or the lock washers. The next grown tab in line. And then a nut. And then the same same fight begins. Ah, helps when you put it down the short one too. Have to run the run the short wire through all three of those as well. There we go. All right, and that's why I held off. soldering that short wire to the other jack other than it would have been impossible to get the wires through the holes. I'll show you how I deal with that in a moment. More longer than a moment depending on how long I fight with this. There we go. We have the same luxury. All right, that one's starting on there and all. And that's generally the way I do it, is I just get them all started. At this point with the short wire, uh, I put the knot on first, the last grown tab, lock washer, and then take that short wire, feed it the opposite way. The other ones have been coming from outside the console to the inside. We're gonna go from the inside to the outside. I'm going to pull all the excess that I have. I'm going to grab the last jack, in this case the red one. Tin this wire, but it doesn't look like I tin the very end. Right. Need some excess here. and Give it a quick twist. Get it in a position where I can solder it up. will help here Don't hold it being careful not to uh, not to melt the plastic with my soldering iron which is very easy to do In the excess. Back 
jacket out of the way. I'll put the jack in the hole. And feed the lock washer over the uh, ground tab and finally the nut to get that nut started. Same as the others. This is a lot easier to do on 2600 consoles where you have complete access to the back. You can just use a nut driver and tighten these down in short order. As you can see though at this point when the all started and in position, got three wires, three wires hanging out. One of them's grown, one of them's for audio, one of them's for video. And uh, I'm gonna fight to get these these nuts snug. And I use a variety of tools usually for this. I haven't found anything that uh, that does the job easily. I kind of stick with my tweezers until I get them to the point where I can't get them any tighter with them. And then I'll just go at them with a pair of needle nose pliers. There's just not enough room in here to turn a wrench, in my experience. It's on this far side. When you get near, there's a there's a plastic peg that helps support the motherboard directly under the uh, the cart connector. And uh, depending on what tool you use, if you get in there with a bigger wrench, it's pretty easy to snap that peg right off. So it's another reason to avoid it in my opinion but uh, I said to get a better grip next I use the needle nose pliers but the problem with needle nose pliers that exists is you don't get the best grip they're not meant to grip something this this wide so they tend to slip That one's plenty snug now. That is one of the problems with the, the 7800 in terms of doing uh, any kind of video mod is that there's just not a lot of real estate for jacks and uh, even if you go in the same spot that I mentioned earlier that people often do on the side of the console you're still in the same predicament that you have to reach down into a, a cavity or a recess to, to tighten up the jacks anyways those are uh, they're fairly snug at this point. Doing a little more wire poking over. I'm going to trim up. Let's straighten up my handiwork a bit. I'm tuck that wire. Oh, at this point, I generally hand my uh, console over to my girlfriend to read the wire. All right, at this point, uh, Jacks are in place. Let me see. I never really want to see how all lined up. They're not good. Uh, the jacks are in place. Uh, all wired up on the inside. A little tough to see in there, but there's a lot going on, I guess. And uh, wires are braided. And uh, the, the the ends are stripped back about a quarter of an inch and. They're tinned as well. At this point, I wire up the wires to the, to the mod board. On the bottom of the mod board, the three holes on the bottom, uh, those are the outputs, and the four holes along the left side there that you see are the inputs. As I said earlier in the video, three of those inputs are going to go directly into the RF modulator, and I'm going to use, or where the RF modulator hooked up, the holes that I cleared earlier. I'm going to use a header pin. Uh, it's kind of double stacked with the plastic. I stole 
the plastic off the the header pin that was where the uh, uh, RF modulator hooked up when I desoldered that when I took the plastic. I find it works well if I double stack it. It's about the right height. And uh, the fourth hole, the top hole, is the audio. Let's see, focus up. There we go. Is the audio, and uh, I'm gonna put a wire in there, a short bit of wire, and uh, that's gonna run to the bottom of resistor five and six. I pointed out earlier, and uh, that's where we're gonna tap the board for audio. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Anyhow, now I got the, the board uh, all prepared and ready to go. Uh, the three wires on the bottom are, are leading out to the jacks. The one white wire up on top, which is about four inches long, is uh, is going to go to the, the resistors on the board for the audio. And then there you can see maybe the three header pins sticking out of the board, uh, which are going to go and plug into the pins on the board that the uh, RF modulator previously plugged into right uh, there. So there's three pins. In this case, there's four holes, obviously. Uh, it starts with the the first pin, and the, the very top hole gets left open. I'm not going to put anything there. So at this point, I like to do, I like to put the board in there first. And it can be a little tricky to uh, to hold it in place while you uh, while you solder, but especially when you're tethered to the shell. But it can certainly be done. <clears throat> All right. At this point, the the uh, mod board is in place. It's been uh, soldered in those three pins. Uh, the white wire is still hanging loose. Gonna, you can see those lower three holes, the top holes left open. And then I'm uh, just going to go ahead and put the board in place for the time being. And just to reiterate here, the, uh, let's see, there we go. The uh, audio is going to go at the bottom of these two resistors right here that are next to that that red component, the large one sticking out of the out of the board. Uh, I'm gonna I have that white wire stripped back and tinned, and then I have it kind of bent, kind of a hook, got a little 90 on there. I'm gonna slide it in from this the right side here in there, and I'm gonna bridge both of those pins together as I saw it. And I'll show you what that's the, that'll look like here in a moment. All right, and here's that white wire, uh, soldered in place. You can see at the base of that those two resistors. There's kind of a glob there, uh, tying those two resistor legs together and joining that white wire with them. Uh, and that's that's about it for. Uh, for the video mod. Uh, I still have another couple of things to do in here and I'll probably cover those in other videos. Uh, with the way that the mod board is and these wires uh, ran here right next to the RF modulator. If you, there's, there's quite a bit of room here between where the PCB and the case are. So that's a good place to, to run them down and also with the uh, RF shielding you can put that directly in place. There's nothing in the way of that, so you can you can replace all that. Uh, I guess I'll fire up this console quick and make sure everything everything's functioning. Like I said before, I still have to replace the tack switches, so I might not power up instantly here. It's a good game. Test this. What a 2600 game with some music. There's ET. We got my RCA cables here.
TV on. And you can hear it very loud. Turn it on. And there it be. My test TV. E.T. in all of its glory. And for the most part, the tax switches work, but a couple of them are a little iffy in my testing, so I'll put all new ones in. I guess I'll fire up a 7800 game as well. What Galaga? And there it is. Let's see. Uh, one other thing to mention if this is your uh, first time going inside of a 7800 is that, again, like I said before, the, the plastic can be awfully brittle. And if you, uh, when you put the top half of the shell back on, if you uh, cross thread any of the screws, uh, you might very well just crack the post right off the shell, and that would be tragic. So, uh, especially these rear ones, there's nothing really supporting them. Let me turn this off so I don't have to listen to that. Shoot. All right, uh, the front ones, there's quite a bit of material here to help support them, but these these rear ones are kind of floating in space. And if uh, when you tighten this thing up, or if you over tighten them, you might just crack these right off, and, and that's not good news. So uh, my recommendation is that when you screw them in, you screw them backwards a little bit until you hear them kind of snap into the thread, and then uh, screw them forward, and make sure not to not to over tighten them. Otherwise, you might end up cracking off a screw post or two. And uh, oftentimes with these back ones, it will also take the uh, one of the, the the pieces of the vent with it so it won't be just confined to the damage here on the inside you might see it on the outside as well so and that's about all I got uh, thanks for watching I'll post up some other videos uh, showing other tips and mods so keep looking at my channel thanks